What you just saw was the thinnest of thin slices of the real thing. After the real thing, everybody didn't get up and stand in a line. After the real thing, the dead were dead forever. After the real thing, those helicopters were going to come in and hurry those wounded back to the hospitals, where if they made it, they had a very good chance of surviving. But for everybody who was in this fight, whether they walked away unscratched, or they were wounded and maimed for the rest of their lives, or whether they were going to go home in a body bag, they would never be the same. Because they would never forget, could never forget, what they'd seen and what they'd heard and what they'd had to do. Unlike the movies or the video games, scenario doesn't end when the last shot gets fired. We don't roll the credits in real life. We don't punch a button and say we'd like to play that scenario over again. The real thing has consequences. It always has and it always will. Nobody who goes to war comes home from it unchanged in some way, big or small. And those changes affect the families who are back home, whose loved ones return or don't, changed in some small way or some big way. The reason we're doing this program this weekend is not to glorify war because there's very little of war that can be glorified. We can celebrate sacrifice and heroism and gallantry and technological innovation and brilliant leadership, but the flip side is death and misery and destruction and waste and tragedy. I've had the uh, great and estimable pleasure in my career to having spoken and interacted with thousands of veterans. And the thing that has always impressed me about our veterans of whatever time period, is that they're the most humble, straightforward people that you will ever meet. We apply the term hero to them, and rightly so. But talk to any of them, and the first thing they'll tell you is they're not heroes. They went and did a dirty, nasty job that had to be done, and they did it because their country called on them. And sometimes their country treated them as heroes when they came home, after World War I and World War II. And sometimes they came home to indifference, like Korea and Vietnam, or outright hostility. There are some people in our country who did not treat our veterans very well after Vietnam great stain on America's history. 
Thankfully, we have begun to rectify that, but you can never completely rectify it. Our Vietnam veterans are, in fact, heroes, but as they would tell you, the real heroes are their 58,000 comrades, brothers and sisters, who never came home who rest beneath the white crosses and stars of David in the military cemeteries across our country and around the world. Monday is the one day of the year that our country especially sets aside to remember them, to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf, who laid down their lives so that we could live as a free and prosperous and secure people. Monday is not about a day off from work. And it's not about having the post office and the banks closed. And it's not about the mattress stores having sales. And it's not even about picnics and ball games. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But Monday is about us pausing at least for a moment to remember that we have those things because of what our veterans have done for us and especially for what our fallen veterans have done for us. And to remember that sacrifice, I would like to ask all of you to rise. Gentlemen, if you would remove your covers. One, two. Freeze it. Arms.